Hello my soccer universe and <laughs> let's talk about what happened in Portugal and in Spain. Actually quite a few interesting things did happen there so we uh, better get right to it and we have to start straight in Portugal because one of the big two actually lost. It was uh, Sporting uh, who lost at Santa Clara despite having a 1-0 and a 2-1 uh, lead. But Santa Clara twice could equalize and then found in the 77th uh, Thorica Dinho uh, a winner. That would allow Porto uh, to actually move ahead and uh, three points clear if they would win at Storil, a uh, promoted team who had actually been really, really, really good uh, so, so, so far. They are actually uh, fighting for your European spots. And wouldn't you know it, they are 2 nil up at the halftime uh, at home and then Porto comes back. Uh, Taremi uh, gets one, one back and then uh, Luis Diaz in the 84th and then Sergio Conceição brings on his son who in the 90th minute scores the winner. Pretty big goal and he was running straight to his coach, to his dad. There you go. 3-2 uh, win for Porto and Porto look really really good now winning the league because that the way the league has been going, uh, no team really is allowed to uh, crack. I mean, Porto still could be caught and they're still head to head and so on. But at the moment, uh, all the points, all the uh, <laughs> signs are that it will be Porto. Benfica also get back with a 2 0 over Passos. Uh, Braga only 2 2 against Family Cow needs to also be pointed out. Um, as for the next round on the 15th, uh, if, is there a chance to triple for Porto? No, they play against Belenens, so I don't think so. Vizela against Sporting, so both would actually be expected to win. Uh, there's actually not a really big game out there. Uh, but before that, and it happens actually already uh, tonight, we have the Portuguese Cup, and I've been in a little bit sleeping on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, we already the quarterfinals there. Uh, in the previous round, Porto beats Benfica 3 0. Yeah, and I should have uh, covered that, but I, it completely passed me by. Uh, but we have a fourth division lesser uh, playing against Sporting tonight. Uh, we have then uh, Rio Ave, who just have been relegated, playing against Sondela, Vizela against Porto, and Porto Manage against Mafra, also from the second league. So these are the games that we have uh, this midweek in Portugal. Moving over to Spain, as I said, again, I did not see much of Portugal, but so we can go straight into <laughs> Spain. Um, and yeah, this league round saw, first off, Levante win the first game of the season, the longest losing streak in La Liga history, over. Levante finally get a win over Mallorca, more than um, deserve it because they have been knocking. And maybe that might be just enough to maybe get them out. We'll uh, talk talk about that. I actually watched, uh, I think, most of uh, Real Sociedad and Celta Vigo. Was um, yeah, I mean, it was not a great game, but it was an entertaining. Uh, it was entertaining, uh, more or less. Although Real Sociedad, after a you really had the feeling that they are just the better team. Oyar Sabal gives them in the 13th minute the lead. Then you thought already in the 60 second that they had uh, doubled their lead, but then there was a handball by Elustondo. Um, but you know, Vigo tried, but Real Sociedad actually really looked uh, good in that one. Which is not something we can really say about Barcelona, who were struggling at uh, Granada. Uh, although Luc de Jong had a goal disallowed uh, through a header, he tried again uh, a spectacular goal, which didn't work. And then, <laughs> of all people, Dani Alves, first game five years for Barcelona, cross in at Luc de Jong, uh, scoring the lead. And you really uh, think every Barca fan is kind of rubbing their eyes. What just happened? Uh, and then Gavis gets sent off uh, with a rush challenge. Uh, something where I hear many say, yeah, is this really going to happen? Is this, uh, this is going to happen again, isn't it? Uh, and then Puertas in 89th equalizes and almost at the dead. Uh, it would have cool, could have been the 2-2-1, uh, but Ter Stegen saves it out after a um, pass out from him uh, got intercepted, but uh, he manages to get that one out. And then we come to the game, uh, the nominal uh, big game between Real Madrid and Valencia, um, where again uh, Benzema and Vinicius uh, proved to be unstoppable. 
Yes, uh, Valencia is a little bit aggrieved because the penalty in the 43rd minute, uh, one could see it's a little bit contentious. There is contact there, Casemiro is running through it, I think he got stopped. Uh, some say he is seeking the contact. I think the way that the referee saw it, there's no way that this is going to overturn, be overturned. And so for me, uh, I have to say, yeah. Uh, you gotta go with what the referee is giving. I, it was not an egregious uh, un, uh, call, uh, in my opinion. However, the second goal by Vinicius Junior, the way he runs through the Valencia de uh, defense, and you th you see the Valencia defender already thought that he had the ball, and then he toe pokes it out of him and to run towards the goal. A an amazing goal. Uh, then he heads in the second one from uh, close range. In the 61st, and it's all Real Madrid. Uh, it was just will it be a, a clean sheet or not? No, as a penalty that Gedesh misses, but then in the rebound he converts. But the Real Madrid said, No, we're gonna win by three goals, and Monsemar gets his second one. The two seem unstoppable. Real Madrid, little hiccup, fully, fully back. Uh, another game that was a little bit influenced by a referee was Rayo against Betis, which could have been a really fun game, but the early uh, red record for Betis for Moreno, um, yes, he hits the other player on the head, but the player is going so far down, I actually think it was a little bit rough uh, of a red, 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 red card, and that actually really... Um, condition the game then uh at that point uh bet is just trying to hang on actually they take the lead through canales after a nice bayarin assist but right after um uh, rayo come back bayou gets the equalizer they were pressing for uh the, the win so overall it was ent entertaining but i think it could have been a much better game it would have been played at full strength. Uh, Sevilla beat Getafe, who had just beaten Real Real Madrid to stay in contention. And I think the biggest uh, and, and, and probably the best game was Villarreal against Atletico Madrid. That Correa goal from just inside the center circle, close to the halfway line, he was tipped off by CMC Simino that uh, the, play, the, play, yeah, the uh, keeper rule really tends to be outside of box. So, really 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 great goal I gotta I, I gotta say uh, but it was Villarreal who controlled most, most of the game they had a penalty saved where the rebound from Paredes uh, was actually uh, no 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 Parejo not Paredes Parejo who actually uh, got in, in, intercepted ahead of the Korea goal by Korea uh, he pulled it in but there was a handball in there so uh, the goal was this, this up, but then a few minutes later Pau Torres uh, pulls it in uh, kind of a funny one because um Oblak saves it and it goes right to a uh, power that that much space to put the ball and that is exactly then uh, Andre Moreno assist by Gera Moreno puts Villarreal in the lead and you really thought that they get back uh, they will get then the win because they turned around but uh, Kondogbia comes back uh, makes it 2-2 then at the end maybe Atletico Madrid a bit better but eh, was a pretty good game and I have to say Villarreal really have turned around their season at the moment. Now as for upcoming fixtures a little bit of a mess because we have the Spanish Super Cup coming up um, which I'm not gonna cover uh, because I don't like a Super Cup being played outside of uh, the league uh, and for all the other reasons so I'm not gonna talk about it even if there's a classical I don't care. Um, but we have uh, the next round, I mean, uh, Bilbao against uh, Real Madrid had already been played and have a few fixtures that come already uh, Sunday to Tuesday and Wednesday um, with Valencia Sevilla being the outstanding fixture there. But we also have a little bit of Spanish Cup. So the, the scheduling at the moment in Spain is a little bit off. But Spanish Cup, we already are in the round of 16. So I'm a little bit early there that I was in Portugal. Where we have on Sunday and Saturday actually a Seville Derby, which I think is kind of um, exciting. We also have Mallorca, Esp Espanyol, uh, not too bad either. Uh, three matches that will probably be played uh, then mid next week. But we have to see is Athletic Club against Barcelona and Real Sociedad against Atletico Madrid. Elche Real Madrid should be a foregone conclusion. So... I'm gonna end it here. I wanted to get this done uh, relatively quickly uh, to get uh, back uh, to work and have other things to do. Africa Cup is also also coming, but I really um, wanted to see. I uh, wanted, wanted to talk about what's happening because it was kind of a uh, good round in Spain as well. In any case, please add anything that you would like to add uh, in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. 
and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!